Hey, I'm Mark. Welcome to my channel, Little Gripes. Today we're going to be installing this New Air G73 Space Heater. This is a compact 240 volt unit that puts out just over 17,000 BTUs and they recommend this for workspaces of 500 square feet or less. So it's perfect for a garage, workshop or shed. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get it mounted up, wired up and then we're going to test it out. Let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so the first thing we need to do is get the mounting bracket mounted to the heater itself. Uh, now the New Air G73 includes a mounting bracket that can be used on a ceiling or the wall as well as some anchors that you can use and the bolt that's required to attach the heater to the bracket. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to link to this product down in the uh, description section so if you want to check out more details, reviews on Amazon and so forth, just go ahead and click that link. Alright, so there are a couple of bolts on the side. I'll spin it around here so you can see. And I've already loosened it up. It happens to be a 12 millimeter. And we're going to go ahead and take that out of both sides. And the bracket just goes on like this. And we'll replace the bolts. Now the cool thing is, um, because you may want to angle this downward, uh, you can see the bracket has these thumb screws and those will line up with these holes. So if you angle the heater downward, um, you can tighten in the, th the uh, thumb screw and that will prevent the uh, you know vibration from changing the angle. So we'll demonstrate that when we get it uh, hung up. And I'm going to mount it on the wall and I'll show you why here shortly. Go ahead and put one of the thumb screws in here. And again, these are uh, 12 millimeter. All right, so taking a look at the back, you can see that this unit has a thermostat control, and this is the primary reason I am um, installing it on the wall as opposed to the ceiling, so I can reach that easily. This is going to be sort of a secondary heat source for me. I have radiant floor heat in my garage, and um, radiant floor heat's not real responsive, so I keep it at 55. If I want to bring it up to 65, it takes a while. My furnace runs, and if I have, those, if I have other zones on, it even takes longer. So what we're going to do is just kick this on when I want to work out here and bring it up to a more comfortable temperature uh, more quickly. That's all. All right, so again, this is a 240-volt unit. Alright, so what I've done here is I use a straight edge and I just sort of lined up the center of the drywall nails throughout so in the garage here so everything's visible. And I just marked off where the holes are. Um, and I just want the bracket all the way up here so the heater's going to hang down quite a bit. Now I'm not going to use the anchors they provided because I have a stud right here. I'm just going to use uh, some lag bolts and a washer, okay? But before I uh, wind them in, I'm going to actually drill some pilot holes so that we don't split our stud, okay? Let me grab a drill in a bit. Alright, the radiant barrier on my ceiling is kind of covering that top hole here, but you get the idea of what we're doing. We're going to go ahead and uh, start with the top hole of the bracket and my lag bolt and washer. And get that one in first. All right, let me grab my level here, see how we're doing. And Actually, we're pretty good right there. I'm just gonna go ahead and crank it down. We're using that top uh, bubble there, and that's uh, probably as straight as anything else in my house. So uh, let's crank it down. All right, so New Air provides a carriage bolt. Uh, it's got a square piece there just below the head to attach the uh, heater to the bracket. And there's a square hole here. So we're gonna go up through that, okay? And that just prevents that uh, bolt from turning. And then they have a spacer right here. It goes next. You go up through the hole here. We have a star washer, a lock washer, and then a 17 millimeter nut. Okay, now I'm going to leave this somewhat loose because we're going to have to uh, move it around to hook up the power um, and then we can crank it down. But the nice thing is, you know, you can angle it this way as well. And I didn't even show that the uh, louvers also move. So we'll go ahead and uh, show that when we test it out. 
All right, let's talk about the wire here real quick. Um, I hesitated in the beginning of the video when I started talking about how many wires, and that's because a lot of people do get confused. This is 10-2 Romex. Um, it's got the orange shielding there, but I stripped the uh, shielding back so that I could get it, the wires through this 90 degree fitting here, okay? Um, so when you talk about 10-2, say, it's 10 gauge wire and two shielded wires in a bare ground. 10-3 would be three shielded wires in a bare ground, okay? Now, because it's 10-2, it had a black and a white, and I wrapped this white wire with uh, red electrical tape just to show that it's carrying current. And again, I'll link to the video at the end of this one, but in my 240-volt uh, outlet installation video, I did miss this step, and you'll see shortly that I've corrected that in the panel, as well, at the, uh, as, well as at the uh, outlet end, okay? What we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and use wire nuts, and we're gonna wire them up. Now, keep in mind, there's no real polarity when you're talking about 240 uh, volts or there's no, uh, you know, basically we're going to go black to black, white to white. But honestly, they could be either way because each, um, each of these wires is going to be carrying 120 volts, all right? Hopefully that makes sense. We'll talk about that more when we get to the uh, panel. What I need to do is get that plate because the plate needs to go on first, all right? All right, so what we're gonna do here, we'll just start with the uh, ground. I'm just gonna go ahead and, I'm not gonna pre-twist it, I'm just gonna go ahead and line up the ends like that. Take my wire nut, pop it over, make sure that uh, nothing moved when you did that, and then you're gonna turn clockwise, okay? You're gonna basically turn, what it's doing is it's threading on at the end, and you're gonna turn until you can feel a lot of resistance. And when I get done, I like to tape these all up, especially on a unit like this because of the vibration. Um, chances are we're not going to have any issues with wire nuts falling off or anything, but um, it's just the way I like to do it. Okay. Same thing here. I know the light is being obscured here, but I kind of push down to get it started, and then you'll know when it, when it grabs. All right, what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, put the plate in. We're going to tuck the wires up in, make sure they don't go up into where the fan is. Uh, and you can see this has a lip on it, and that's because this lip goes on the top side of this plate, or the inside of this plate, and that helps hold that side in. I don't know how much you're going to be able to see, because this would be you know, obviously a lot easier if the camera weren't right here in front of me. But... All right, so we're here at the uh, breaker panel, and I'm just gonna go ahead and shut off the main breaker to the house, and we'll know it's gonna shut down because all my lights are gonna go down. There we go, just like that. Um, now we're gonna remove uh, the screws on the outside of the panel because we need to get to uh, the breakers themselves. Okay, let me put the camera down, get this panel removed, okay? All right, so we do have the power off to the box, okay? We're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna strip the uh, shielding to this Romex down so that we can work with individual wires. Um, you want to take note of where you need to uh, attach the ground in your panel because you want to leave yourself, you know, enough length. You could always use a wire knot and do it, but you know, leave yourself enough and then cut as necessary. That's what I, that's what I do. Okay, so we'll talk a little bit about, you know, 240 volts. Um, this particular setup I mentioned before that it basically has two wires carrying 120 volts of current in a ground. Now some, like your dryer or your stove or your oven, you know, also has a neutral. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wire up a generator here in a couple of months and I'll show a video on that and that will be a four wire. As a matter of fact, um, I have the Romex right here. Actually, technically, it's a three wire, okay, 10-3, uh, but three wires in the ground, all right? Let's go ahead and um, get the ground attached, and my ground bus is over here. Um, and what I need to do is find a spot, and there's one right there. You probably can't see a whole lot here. Uh, let me see if I can zoom in just a hair. Okay. Uh, 
I am trying to do it quickly because we have no power and my son is complaining of course because he can't play video games. What I'm going to do is try to shape the wire before I get it there. So hopefully that makes sense. I'm just going to kind of come in with a 90 like that. That way you can just, when you get it in there, you should be able to push it right in. Bang it down. So I had a comment uh, yesterday, uh, a couple of days ago, I guess. You know, probably from a licensed electrician saying that it's illegal to do this. And it, it's not. Homeowners have the uh, right and it's legal to perform minor electrical work in your home. Obviously you want to use precautions, you know, shut your power down, know what you're doing, okay? So when we talk about the legs, you can see here, one on each side, okay? So each side of this panel carries 120 volts. And a breaker that's designed for 240 volts connects to each leg. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I've got to wrap this white wire, I'm going to wrap it in red electrical tape, and we're going to connect it to the breaker. So let me go ahead and do that real quick, you don't need to see me wrap the wire. Alright, let's take a quick look at the other side of the panel, I just want to show you that this side here is the neutral bus, and all those white wires are running to it, okay? Um, which is the reason we really need to mark this wire is, is carrying current, alright? And I'll just show you guys um, that this is the wire... I've since wrapped um, for my compressor outlet, so uh, if you want to check that out, again, that'll be linked at the end. And um, you could actually hook this up to an outlet as well, but I'm going straight in. All right, we're going here. This is the spot. Now, uh, the unit draws just under 21 amps, so a 20 amp breaker may work, uh, but when that fan kicks on, it may draw more. Um, so you're going to have to go with something heavier than 20 amps. I've got a 30 amp breaker here. Um, for another project. I'm going to use it for this one now. And you can see I'm almost out of space. Um, now here's how these go in. I'm just going to show you how it goes in and then I'll hook the wires up. You've got, uh, you've got a couple of notches here. You're going to line those notches up here. Like that. And then push in. Okay? Just like that. But it's going to be easier to hook the wires up with the, with the breaker out. Okay? Let me uh, strip these back a little bit. We're working by flashlight here. I just hit it, so... Okay. You don't want much. Just about like that. Alright, now this breaker has... Well, they all have screws. But this one actually has a hole that the wire goes into. Uh, some of them have sort of, I'd call them plates that compress on the wire, okay? And you're just going to pop it in. Again, it does not matter which side, right, in this setup. That light's probably going to freak the uh, video out. And you don't know sometimes until you get to edit uh, the edit phase, uh, what the light has done. All right. Now we've got wires hooked up, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to manipulate that breaker into position, but again, catch the back side and then pop it in place. Alright, so the breaker needs to be in the off position because, you know, this is a new piece of equipment when we fire it back up. We're going to want to flip that on independently, okay? I don't think we're going to have any issues, but safety first. Now what I'm going to do is replace my uh, panel cover. Uh, before we flip on the main breaker, let me go ahead and do that real quick. Alright, what I want to do is actually uh, make sure that this thermostat is all the way down. Oh, and you can actually hear, that's where the uh, unit will kick on. So I've got it all the way down, that's done by turning this knob counterclockwise. Let's go flip the breaker on. Okay, now if we have an issue, this breaker should immediately trip. Now, obviously, I want to label this. Okay, 
So far so good. Let's go ahead and flip this back on. Now we're gonna go clockwise with it. There we go. Just like that. Quick and painless. Now I mentioned these louvers can be adjusted. Um, they move, obviously you wouldn't want to close uh, the louvers all the way down because the unit could overheat and it does have an overheat protection. If the unit overheats it will shut down on its own, okay? Uh, so you can uh, angle these. We can also angle this. And don't forget that we can actually loosen these thumb screws and tip the whole unit forward, which I think I'll do. Uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully this video has been helpful. I can actually feel heat already. Um, I think it will be a nice addition to my workspace here. And uh, again, check it out. Amazon, I've got a link to it right down below. Hit that subscribe button if you want to see more of this type of stuff. And have fun. Be safe.